Coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. We're going to continue our search for the truth. As we continue to make a deep dive into duo. What is it? Like they used to say on the X-Files, the truth is out there. Hey, did y'all notice my cool intro music? Good buddy of mine. Another school teacher. Well, I'm a recovering school teacher, but he's a school teacher and a coach. Give him a holler. Hell yeah. You can tell I'm from South Alabama. I know how to say it. Hail yeah digital at gmail.com. There's his phone number right there at the bottom of the screen. Give him a holler. He did two or three of them for me, and this is the one I liked the most. They were all awesome. You know, it was kind of like picking your favorite child. They were so good. So if, they also do uh, like personalized birthday and anniversary things. And if you've got a group, you know, maybe it's your travel team, or if you got a group and you want to have some type of like intro music and something you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, copyright rules and stuff like that. You know, that some of y'all been around a while with me doing this for three years now, know that I tried some intro music a while back and and Google and YouTube, but the Lord's the the overlord said, uh, "No, all right, that's enough of that." And uh, at the end, there'll be a card that shows you also their website, but that's hail, yeah, digital at gmail.com. This is the day after the national championship game. Uh, um, of course, if you're from Fort Worth, it's kind of like that movie back in the 80s, the day after when the atomic bomb went off. There's been some funny gifs and memes out there already, and they're mean memes. But uh, yeah, hats off to to Kirby and the and the Georgia Dogs for a, another national championship. But last week in the semifinals, this play right here kind of stirred up people on the Twitter sphere about duo. What is it? What ain't it? You know, and some were saying it ain't duo because of this. It ain't duo because of that. And I I asked a real good friend of mine. He's my duo expert. Um, he was an O-line coach for a school that went undefeated and won the state championship in, in 5A ball in Alabama. And they majored in duo. And uh, I sent him exactly what you're looking at right here. And I said, what will you call this? He said, well, I'd call it duo. And he's kind of like me. He's not going to argue with you because, and listen, it's like I've told y'all before, I'm sitting in the National Wing T Clinic. Um, it, not the uh, when it was at Pittsburgh, but the one year it was at um, at um, Erie. I think it was uh, yeah downtown Erie, Pennsylvania. It was a beautiful trip. Snow was on the ground and everything for an old South Alabama country boy. That was kind of cool. And um, there was a legendary wing tee coach that was sitting behind me, and I knew him because he had come and did a a little small clinic for us a few years before, and I already said hey to him and talked to him. And he was sitting there with, uh, I want to say it was the O-line coach at St. Mary's College. I think that's the name of it up there in Erie. And uh, there was a guy up on the board. This is like darn near 20 years ago when uh, Shotgun Wing T was just starting. And, and this guy was pretty much a legendary high school coach himself that was speaking. And he goes, and he, I'm going to clean it up because it's supposed to be a, a, a family situation. He goes, that crap ain't. He said, that crap ain't buck sweep, and it dang sure ain't wing T neither. Don't be that guy. Don't be caught up in that. That's like these spread guys that get caught up in when uh, guys say a pre-snap uh, gift or a pre-snap read is not an RPO. Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with anybody about it. And if you want to, what I'm going to show you today, if you don't think it's duo, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, let's have a big tent. OK, let's get started and look at some more stuff and talk about what it is. And this goes along hand in hand with some of the stuff I've been doing for the last 10 months. I am not a do o guru. I can assure you of that. Excuse me for that, coaches. Little, uh, you know, We're nothing else if not professional here in our high end studio in beautiful downtown Pine Mountain, Georgia. My dog was nutting up over the gas truck delivering gas. He's looking at me now because his tail's between his legs. 
because I just gave him an earful. I went coach Chip on him. All right, let's get started and let's talk about duo. I was about to tell y'all I'm not a guru. I'm learning it too, and I'm having a ball. By the way, I've been lit up with uh, emails and sharing this stuff with coaches or just like me. And I think the best way to learn something is to teach it and uh, to get more. And remember why I started this whole football talk with Coach Chip was not for me to get up here on the on the YouTube platform and just make up a, a bunch of stuff, but to start a conversation about football. So that's what we're doing, okay? Now I'm going to show you some clips in a little bit, not just that TCU clip. But a duo, what is it? Duo is a blocking scheme. Some people call it power without a puller. And we'll talk about that. But the main thing it is, is trying to get as many double teams as possible. And what I've been able to uh, ascertain or decipher from really, you know, texting and making phone calls with people and, and go, doing a ton of research on the interwebs, Duo calls for the offensive line to check their backside gap. You're responsible for your backside gap. Now, what confused me is when people were saying it was gap scheme. Well, see, I'm an old wing T guy. And so when I hear gap scheme, what do I think? Gap down backer. It's not that kind of block. It's a gap scheme in the sense that the linemen are responsible for a gap. Okay? And pretty much everybody except the backside tackle is responsible for a gap. Okay, and so and if there's something in the gap, they're going to block it and they're going to drive block it. They're not going to block it down. And that's what was confusing me when people were saying it's gap scheme, it's gap scheme. But, you know, if you're an old wing T guy like myself and there's a lot of guys that are out formation dudes back in the day and wishbone guys back in the day that use gap down backer, too. So let me go ahead and get that cleared up. It's not gap down backer gap scheme. It's not your daddy's gap scheme. If you all the OL. All the offensive linemen are looking for as many double team blocks as possible. Heck, against uh, against an odd front, you can get three of them jokers, three combo double teams. All the OL except the backside tackle are responsible for their backside gap. Now, the the backside tackle is. I will talk about him in a minute. All right, if you look in that gap and it's filled, and I'm going to show you a diagram. You block that player. Okay, and this goes back, and you need to, I'll, I'll tag it at the end, link it up. My hip-to-hip -hip drill is perfect for duo, and I've been doing it for several years and didn't realize it was a great duo drill. Okay, if that gap is empty, then you're looking to build a double team with the, the lineman to your play side. So if it is duo right, you're responsible for the gap to your left. And if nothing's in that gap or threatening that gap, now obviously if you're the right guard, and there's a zero nose, then you've got that's that you're going down to that. Okay. You're going to double with the nose, I mean with the center with on that nose. Okay, but anyway, if nothing is threatening that gap, let's say it's an even front and there's a three tech on you, you look in your A gap if you're the right guard, and there's nothing in there, then you're going to double with the play side tackle on that three tech. Okay, and we'll we'll look at that too. The backside tackle is the only one that's really not responsible for the uh the a gap he's responsible for shutting off the backside in a way he's responsible for that c gap if you will if you don't have a tight end on the backside and he's got to let nothing get inside of him he's got to get inside leverage and not let anything cross his face now the running back he's looking at the path of the linebacker now i'm not going to get into debate with that either but some people choose, if there's two inside linebackers, some folks choose, we're going to read that one. The other folks say, we're going to read that one. Okay. And so we won't get into that. And I'm very successful. I've seen, like my buddy, the one they read is not the same one I heard a college guy said he reads. But guess what? It worked for both of them. Okay. And I've looked at some NFL film too, and NFL teams do it different. And I listened to, a, um, I believe it was the Cool Clinic, Cincinnati, Ohio Offensive Line Clinic, Cool Clinic. And the guy got up and did like a 90-minute talk on it. And it was a NFL guy, an old NFL offensive line coach. And what he was saying wasn't exactly what other NFL guys and major college guys were doing. So understand there's more than one way to skin a cat. All right, the tight end, wingback, H, whatever you call him, he's got the end man on the line of scrimmage. Okay, and we'll look at that and you'll show you, see the diagram. He must try to turn him out. If he can't, if that guy's coming hard and use like, uh, and the TCU uh, Michigan clip, 
You just wash his butt down inside, okay? Now, here's what we mean. All right, let's say it's duo right, okay? Here's the right tight end, H, wing back. He's got to shut this off, not let this guy cross his face, and he's got to try to dig him out. If the guy's coming hard, he'll just wash him. If the guy runs his butt up field, he'll come right here because he got to shut off this gap. This guy comes, he'll get him. All right, so look right here at the right tackle. That's the play side tackle. His gap is filled. Say, Coach, ain't anything in that gap. Yeah, this guy here is head up. Now, what we know about head up players, they're 50-50 guys. Okay, they're 50-50 guys. So if he's in a two, which he is, he can go this way or that way. So he's going to come here and build a double team with the right guard. The right guard's going to come off. They're going to try to get hip to hip. And when this guy inserts right here, right guard comes off and collects him. Now, this is what I learned. Uh, if this guy goes there or comes here, neither one of them will come off because the back's just going to bang a gap and go in untouched. If that guy does not insert an A gap, they won't come off. The double team stays intact. Leave him unblocked. His fit has blocked him. Okay? So, all right, right guard looks in his gap, and it's empty. So he knows he's building a double team with his right tackle. All right, the center's responsible for this gap. Well, look, he got a 2 eye inside shoulder of the guard. So that's filled. So he's going to step here with that left foot. He's going to step here, this left guard, with his right foot, and they're going to build a double team right chimp. Now, they're comboing to a linebacker that should be here. He's out here. Okay, I don't know if they went tempo on Michigan, but Michigan is in a bad defense. Look, there's nothing in this gap. And, this, and they see this. They know that if they block him, they're going to score. If they block this Mike linebacker, which I think was really a safety, they're going to score. See, because this guy looks in his gap, and it's empty. So he knows he's building a double team with his center. Okay? And then the backside tackle's got to shut this off, let nothing cross his face. He's going to come right in here. It's almost like the gap hinge or gap flip technique. He's not going to let anything cross his face backside. If this guy runs his happy butt up the field and he comes at blitzing right here, then that tackle's got to get that linebacker coming right there. Does that make sense? Okay, so don't go chasing this guy, letting this guy get a run through. Run throughs will kill any play, even duo. All right, look at a little video. All right, now you can see here they, they're running it with a tight end and an extra wing. Boom. Okay, this is the Packers, of course. Boom, got them double teams at the point of attack. Excuse me, those double teams. My wife gets on me about my about my grammar. All right, now these are the Ravens. Two double teams right there. He bounces that joker because that's where the line, you're making the linebacker fit wrong. See that linebacker fit inside and he went outside. Okay. Let's hit Mike. Boom. And they collected the outside backer, the one over there in the C gap. They collected him with the tight end. And that extra back right there, extra receiver right here. Boom, right there. Okay, he didn't gain a ton, but he gained some. Let's look at it. All right, so I showed you the, uh, the photo about the field and the empty gaps and all that, but look at it this way, okay? He's responsible, the left guard, for this gap. That's the first thing he's got to check. If something's in it, he's got it, okay, whether he gets a double team or not. So they're in an under front, and you got a three to the weak side. He's going to just do a drive block on the three. Okay. All right. The center, he's got that black zone right there. That's the first zone he's got. That's the gap he's got to check. I shouldn't call it a zone. Okay. He's got this gap. Guard's got this gap. Center's got this gap. Right guard's got this gap. If it's, if it's duo right, right tackle. Green's got the green gap tied in. Purple's got the purple gap, and wing back H, extra tight end, he's got the red gap. And technically, he's going to get in right here and turn out. And if the guy's right here, you may and there's nothing in here, those two are going to get a double team. If you got a nine tech right here, and there's nothing in this gap, they're going to get a double team. Okay? 
All right. Now, the key to this whole thing is communication. And I've listened to several of them talk. Like some of them use colors. All right, like they'll say like uh, red means these two or orange means these two. Some use like calls like alpha, okay, A gap. Um, they use words like a B word, telling you you got a double team here. Some use uh, numbers, like I said. Uh, this would be a, a one. This would be a two. This would be a three. Uh, I was listening to one guy talk, talk about an ace, deuce, tray, okay? It doesn't matter what you call it. Matter of fact, I recommend you don't call it anything. You teach it to the kids and let the kids call it because they're the ones that are going to have to make the calls and going to have to remember the calls and have to know the calls and all that good stuff, okay? But this is how you do it. Everybody's responsible for the gap to their left except that backside tackle, and he can't let this guy cross his face or this guy runs up the field. He can't let a backer come flying through there. He's got to shut down that backside. Okay, and that's the, the only one really it doesn't have a gap they're responsible for. If their gap is empty, they will double with the man to their right. Remember, this is duo right. They're responsible for the gap to their left if it's duo right. And if there's nobody in that gap, then they're going to double with the guy to their right unless there's some kind of frigged up defense. Okay, all right, let's look at another one. All right, here it is versus an, uh, an even front, the tight end and wing, backers walked up in a nine. This guy's in a five or a, a set, uh, could be a seven. I heard some young coaches the other day call it a six high, which I'm good with that. You're going to find out when it comes to this stuff, I am flexible. Okay, so let's look at it right here. Remember their gaps. All right, this backside guard's responsible for this gap first. Is anything in it? No, it's empty. So he's looking to double team with his center, the man to his right. This is duo right. Okay, and they're going to combo double team to the wheel. Okay, now, so the center and the guard got the nose. Right guard, he looks in his gap. There's nothing there. So now he knows he's going to build a double team with his right tackle because his right tackle looks in his gap, the gap to the inside, and sees he's got a man there. So he knows he's got him, but they need to communicate, okay, with their calls. So they'll both know, take the proper steps, do the hip-to-hip -hip drill, go to the bottom, look in the, the description. I'm going to link up the hip-to-hip -hip drill. They're going to combo double-team to him. Now, this is what I've been told, okay, by people smarter than me. If he fits here, they're not going to come off the double-team. He's just going to bang a gap right here, and these two are going to get these two. They'll pick up the wheel. One of them will pick up the wheel, and you got a heck of a football play. Okay. So that tackle won't come off versus a three. That tackle will not come off. Okay. And the guard will only come off if he inserts here. That's why you say I got the dotted line just for the guard coming to the left. Okay. Now, my friend uses this guy. No, I have seen in all my research, they're going to press that A gap and they're reading this guy. So if he inserts here, they'll bend that thing right there. Okay. And I, again, no argument. I'm not in a position to argue with anybody about it. I'm just saying it's a big tent. All right. Now, you saw in one of the videos, the running back was over here. Most of the people I have studied listened to, watched, made phone calls with, emailed with, text with, do not like that. They like pistol or they like slightly offset. Why? So that running back can get square to the line of scrimmage and press the line of scrimmage now. The further he's offset over here, like sidecar, and of course you saw it was the Packers doing it. I mean, so you're talking NFL running back. But every high school and college guy I have talked to, and studied with and talked about it with, like where he's either just slightly offset, like slide step, boom, like same side power, or in the pistol, screaming down through there, pressing that thing, threatening these linebackers, making them fit wrong. I was looking at another. Now, if you're in a league that has a lot of 3 3 stack, I, duo is good for you. Let me tell you why. Look at it. You've got three. Friggin' double teams, Hoss. Get shut the front door. You've got three double teams. 
okay? And so all the blitzing in the world. Here's the thing, though. We all know this. So if he comes flying here on the snap, well, the guard's got to get him right now. You know, the, the double is voided, okay? Same thing here. These two got these two. These two got these two. These two got these two, okay? You're getting a shutoff block right back here. You got to get inside. If you can't get inside of him, wash his butt all the way down. You know, kind of like, kind of like the devil in sin. He'll take you further than you want to go. All right, so he wants to go down in here, wash him way past his fit, okay? So these two, the tackle and the tight end, have got the, the four and the stack. Guard, center, got the zero and the stack mic. Then you got your four back here picked up by the backside. Now, this is a case where the backside tackle gets involved at the double team. Okay. Because remember, his job is he's got to get the end man. So the two of them would get the end man working the wheel. And I like, and see, I kind of like the way my buddy does it because in high school football, you're going to see a lot more 3 3 stack than you will, you know, like in college and pro ball. And uh, but reading that mic, so if he fits here, we're coming here. If he fits here, he's going there. Shell game. That's all it is. I know it's running long, but hey, that's why you got a pause button. Okay? Plus, I'm, some of y'all have told me y'all actually put it on when you're in the car and just listen and make fun of my accent and make fun of the crazy things I say, which is cool. That's all right. Like I said, it's cool. All right, let's look at the underfront. All right, y'all call it an underfront. You know, for years, when I started coaching back in the <clears throat> mid-'80s, and even back when I played ball in the '70s in high school, we called this a weak eagle. A three tech was an eagle, like a double three tech was a, what they called a double eagle defense. But for some about 10, 15, 20 years ago, it became the underfront, which is fine. You know, I, I go with the flow. But this is the underfront, and it works against it as well. Okay. You're going to get two double teams right here. Remember, I showed you a while ago. All right. He's got to shut off that backside. He's got to get this guy right here because remember now, his rule is I'm responsible for the backside gap. Remember, we're, we're operating under the assumption everything right now is duo right. Y'all are see me right now. I'm talking with my hands like y'all and pointing at stuff like y'all can see me. All right, so he, that guy's in his gap. The three tech is in the backside guard's gap for those of y'all listening and not watching. So, boom, he, that's all he's worried about. There's somebody in my gap. I got to drive him, okay? All right, then you got the, the zero or the one right here. You're going to combo double team to the mic, to that backer right there on the back side, okay? And I like reading him. I, I really do, you know, because now if he fits here, we're going to bang it play side. If he fits back side, we're going to bang it play side. If he fits over the top of the double team, we're going to bend that joker back right here, and let's see if that safety can tackle, Okay. And then on the front side, you got your tight end and your tackle doubling on the five technique, my outside shoulder of the play side tackle. Okay, and if you got an extra guy, the wing, of course, if the wing's not in there, that backer's not going to be in there. And if he is, you need to be throwing that joker outside, away from that guy. Okay, so that's it. so you've seen it versus a, a regular over front, you know, split forty. Uh, a 3-3, three, three. and by the way, the 3-3, three, three, if it's a 3-4 a or a 3-2, whatever you want to call it, you're still getting your double teams. I mean, it's it's cool as crap. I mean, it really is the odd front. The odd front that gives so many people a hard time. You know, some people get an odd front, and whether the guy's in a 4 or a 4-I, those DNs are responsible for the B gap because they're trying to spill everything. And But you got you can double it now. You can double those guys, and it, it that's even better. Okay, we get, we're 25 minutes in, and I'm not going to show you any more video, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to make another video with just clips, and I'm going to link it down at the bottom. It will also be available at Football Talk with Coach Chip as a standalone video, but I'm going to link that up. If you're watching this on the day that I upload this video, it may not be up there yet, okay? But don't forget our friends at Hell yeah, digital. 
Okay. You can find them, hit them up right there. There's the phone number and there is the email address. They got to advertising your business or group. It is not expensive at all. Uh, you have to talk to them about that. I'm not in the business world. Uh, just give them a holler and say, Hey man, I saw what you did for coach chip. Can you do something like that for me, for my group? Okay. It's catchy. It's colorful. You saw, I think mine's cool as crap. Okay. And you can, um, you can share this stuff. You don't have to worry about paying anybody for, you know, uh, paying, uh, what do they call that? Copyright fees or royalties and things like that. And if uh, your wife, your girlfriend, uh, your wife and your girlfriend, I'm kidding, uh, are having a, a birthday, you can have them, the folks at Hail Yeah Digital, make you a special uh, greeting message for them. Uh, wedding announcements, that kind of stuff's cool. Baby announcements or just a personal video, something you want to put on your on, on your social media. So give them a holler. Okay, I know we've gone too long. Check it down at the bottom. I'm going to have several links. The hip to hip drill, uh, which is awesome for the uh, teaching your kids duo, uh, how to do that. And remember, the whole premise behind it is to dent or drive a wedge into the defense. Okay. And it's just a cool concept that I'm really fascinated by. It's kind of what, uh, it's like a, a really meaty bone, okay, that I have sunk my teeth into. And I'm, I'm just gnawing away at this thing, trying to get as much nutrition out of Duo as I can possibly get. And there's a lot of stuff out there. I found it. You can find it. All right, be sure to tell all your friends about Football Talk with Coach Chip. Check out the links in the course, in the um information at uh, the bottom of the video. Also my email address, seagull.chip at gmail.com. Be sure if you're not a subscriber, subscribe, like the video, like it, like it, like it, and share it. All right. Until next time, y'all, let's all do it together. Be elite.